Mr. Winston Innes. Pin. How are you doing, sir? Yeah, uh, all good, brother. How are you? I'm well, thanks. Uh, I appreciate you coming here, in particular because you told me that you're not like a, you know, out there guy. I think it's fundamentally important that stories like yours get told, particularly for the black child, because I've met so many successful black people in this country that, for very obvious reasons, don't want to be known because of jealousy, because of sabotage, because of safety, physical safety. So thank you so much. And I'm hoping that today we'll get to tell your story, how you got to be who you are today and why you always roll with such serious security people that make me feel nervous. How you doing, bro? Uh, all good, brother, all good. Firstly, I'm saying I'm honored and humbled that you, you'd have me on your show. Sure. You know, when you called, I was like, really, like, I'm the backup dancer to you, you know what I mean? Never that. <laughs> so so I appreciate that you you found it thank you, sir. to have this discussion. And thank you for your hospitality. Even before we met, um, I could feel the warmth. We were meant to do coffee in Durban, then in Joburg, and it never happened. But you've always been considerate, and, and it means a lot to me. So thank you so much. Before we speak about where you were born, how you grew up, why do you roll around with such serious security? Well, like I was saying off camera, the security thing was a Tuduzani thing. Actually. Sorry. Sorry. It was a, a Tuduzani thing, actually. What does that mean? So Tuduzani is Zuma. Yeah, yeah. So That guy is a problem, man. He's a red flag. <laughs> Kidding. No, no, that's my guy. Jim. Sure. Yeah, so... I'd spoken to him, I'd gone over to Dubai and I said, listen, uh, you've got to come back to South Africa, let's, let's look at it, and you've got to make a presidential run, mm. right? But I crossed my mind forward and said, listen, if this guy's going to come back, he needs to come back and the security situation needs to be right. Yeah. You know, it was at a crazy time. And I said, you know, let's get that sorted for him so when he comes back, it's just, it's easy. Sure. You know, so so that's how that came about. Other than that, I'm good with these. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that's how we put together a team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember rolling with you in Durban, and uh, I was about to leave with my backpack. You know me, minimalist, and you were like, "No, let's let's drive with the guys." And I was going to meet. Uh, I was I was actually going to meet up with my children. And when I, when the security was opening the doors, when I spoke to my children's mom and her family, they were like, hey, Baba, who are you with there? Why are you dealing with serious things? So I guess from my side, for making me feel important in the world, thank you to you and, and to Tuzani. Yeah. Ah, thank you. It's, it's, not, it's not even worth the mention, my brother. When you're with us, you're one of us. Oh, boom. Even when you're not with us, you're one of us, G. So, so. Where, were you, where were you born and, and how have you gotten to where you are now running a, I don't even know if it's called a multi-million rand business because you do hundreds of millions. Look, um, I was born in Newlands East. Yeah. Uh, a hood next door to Kumashu. So Kumashu. Sure. We, we neighbors, yeah. My dad's from a place called Mapumulo, mm. and my mom's from Hardy. Um, my mom was a Glover, my dad was an Innes. They hooked up in Durban somewhere. Full colored. Yeah, I don't like to use the term because it's kind of, and I'm black as the ace of spades, <laughs> so it kind of confuses people like I'm having an identity crisis. But yeah, you know. Um, it's a social construct, and I think I, I fit into what what they they call that. You okay. Know, colored, yeah. Both your parents colored, both of your parents dark, and here you are today. Both of my parents are colored, but not both are dark. Okay. That's the thing. And I'm literally the black sheep of the family because I'm the darkest <laughs> in my family. <laughs> you know, so... Um, yeah, it just worked out. So when I need to get into a school, I would have to go with a parent or my sister. And then they're like, is this really your brother? Mm. Okay, can you come with the other parent? Sure, because we're not so, sure what's happening yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was that kind of vibe. 
uh, and then yeah, grew up in Newlands. Uh, was into sport, boxing. Mm. Um, then later did some MMA, mixed but, martial arts. Yeah, yeah. So that's my background. Uh, then no, please, please, please elaborate there because you you were pro. Yeah, yeah. Look, Seri- a serious fighter. Like people can't just come up to you and try themselves out. Look, uh, when it came to boxing, I was I was pretty good. You know, mm. um, good's relative, right? Yes. Yeah. I meet lots of guys saying they 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 pretty <laughs> handy, you know, but <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> but I think I was pretty good. Um, yeah. uh, you know. I always say to 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 people, I might not be as fit, but I give you thirty seconds that'll change your life. Oh boy! How you look at the world will change after those thirty seconds, and if you survive that, hey, every everybody <laughs> has a plan until they punched in the face yeah, or in the yeah, mouth. Yeah, Is yeah. that Mike Tyson? Yeah. So look, I, I I can handle myself. I started boxing when I was like six years old. My dad was worried that I was I was a soft kid. Jeez! Like this kid. He's a bit soft. Yeah. He's complaining about asthma and the rest of it. Let's get him. Let's get him into a gym, and and I got into a boxing gym, and I was scared. I was really scared. Can you imagine? Right. And my first fight was like, I was two months in, and I had a fight, and I just remember the bell ringing. Mm. And then I remember my mom bathing me, so I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be all right. <laughs> That's all I remember about that, you know. And then as time went mm. for like years, it's not a story like, okay, eight months in, I started to figure it I used to get beat, you know, yeah. um, because I, I just didn't have the confidence. I didn't have... The aggression it took, I didn't have uh, the necessary focus, right? Yeah. But I was so scared of being hit, it sharpened my reflexes, mm. right? Then after a while, I'm talking about five years in, I never used to win, but I never used to, like, lose. Yeah. Meaning, you tried and hit me, you couldn't hit me. Like, I, I literally could Flo- see... Floyd Mayweather, boy. Yeah, because like I was literally scared of being hit. Yeah. I didn't want to be touched on the face. So, you know, I was really good at ducking, ducking yeah. shots. And then one day my dad said, hey, why don't you like try it back? I said, oh, that's interesting. He said, look at it this way. <laughs> the guy's still going to hit you. He's not going to get more mad yeah. if you hit him back. And I think you could put up, you know, a good, a good fight. Yeah. And I would hit guys back, and it would make them, it would take them off their game. They'd try to fight harder, but they couldn't land punches. And that's how I started to figure out that, hey, I'm actually quite good at this. And then, and then it was my thing, you know. I, I normally speak about um, rugby as an important sport for young boys, in particular in this country. And I speak about it as a hidden form of military training, in particular for white Afrikaans boys running, lifting weights, running full on into another gent. Um, do you think boxing is underappreciated and is something that maybe we need to revive for young boys to build confidence, physical prowess? Look, I'm going to be biased because I'm a, I'm a former boxer. Yeah. But the truth is, I think any form of sport okay. is imperative. Because of the discipline it takes, right? Mm. Because of the struggle. Yes. Just from competing. Yes. You know, and I say, never wish away the privilege of struggle. Because that's the barometer you need to know if you're doing better. Mm. Imagine if you've never struggled. How do you know that you're successful? Successful in relation to what? So struggle is a privilege. Yeah. Because, because that gives you the the measuring stick, mm. right? So so you having this conversation with me now, and you saying Winston, you've done okay for yourself, and but it's relative, yeah, to where I come from. Yeah, there's some people who've been born at that level of of 
privilege. income, wealth, privilege, mm. that if they were to be compared to me, would be they'd say, oh, yes, this, you you haven't done yeah. anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. So 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 you can't wish away the privilege of struggle, and and our people try to sh- circumvent that. Mm. You know, they try and wish it away, yeah. so to speak, because they don't truly appreciate that that's the thing you got to get through. Yeah. Right. So, so you, in the state of denial, in the state of feeling like why me, self pity. Mm-hmm. In the state of entitlement, mm. no, my brother, and and looking for shortcuts. Yeah, you gotta go through it, yeah. right? Because that's the barometer you need. You appreciate a sunny day because you've had rainy days, 100%. right? You appreciate daytime because you've had nighttime. Yeah, but if you've always had nighttime, and someone says, "Listen, we're gonna have some more nighttime," it doesn't change because yeah. because it it takes away the the barometer you need. Right. I, I, I used to be very scared of tackling when I started rugby at under 9, under 10 level. Yeah. Um, and I watched the transformation. What's interesting is my brother now works out a lot. He's got quite the body. Um, he loves shooting guns. He's a gun enthusiast. And one of the things he normally highlights is I'm only like this because I was a coward. Yeah. I gym hard because I'm scared that I'll meet someone. Yeah who's stronger than me, so I need to be stronger than them. I learn how to be proficient with a gun because I'm scared of being shot. 100%. And the amount of brave people out there that started out as guys who are like, I was just scared, man. The reason I, I became so rich and successful because I was scared of being poor. Yeah. The reason I became such a machine was because I didn't want people to pick on me. 50 Cent chronicles uh, his upbringing dealing with guns, drug dealing, some of the rappers as well, but he's become super successful. And I want to ask you if, do you think a big part of your success can be credited to the things you learned in the boxing ring, the struggles and the overcoming and that where to this day, you're like, whenever I'm unsure, I just refer back to to my training as a kid. Of I didn't know, I was scared. I learned to duck and now I, I go on the offensive, even in business and life in general. So, so, yes, I can credit to it to that. I, I say fear is your friend, right? Because you need to have a healthy fear. Of mm. when, when I teach people to fight, I prefer a fearful student. Mm. Like if he's the quiet, scared guy in the corner, that's a guy who will be, who'll be great. If he gets past, Yes. The sphere. If he gets past where he is, that guy is going to be something else because his execution is going to be blindingly fast. Mm. His cunning is going to be on another level because that guy is not giving you a chance. Yes. He's not, yeah, because I like to be, yeah. Sure. He's like, this thing needs to be finished. Yeah. You know? So, so fear like pain. Imagine if you couldn't feel pain. Mm. You die prematurely. Yes. Because you wouldn't know your ribs broken. Yes. Your lungs punctured. You wouldn't know you got a you know you got a headache. It's possibly a brain tumor. But you mm. don't you don't have that that pain. Pain is the alarm. It's just like fear. Yeah. Fear is saying to you, my brother, get in shape, get ready, do the do the hard yards because mm. there's a challenge coming. So so, as I said, fear. Is your friend. I know it sounds cliche, but you, you need that. It's just like when you're worried about a test, mm. it drives you to study. That's what keeps you yeah. up at night, right? You're like, oh, if I flunk this, my, my old man's going to be pissed at me. You know, so, so it drives you. So, so you need those things. Do you find that what we call illegal foreigners and maybe even the legal immigrants in this country come from greater struggle than black South Africans? And that might arguably be why they seem to push harder than ordinary South Africans in certain spaces. But come on, that goes without saying. Mm. Look at, don't even look at illegal foreigners. Look at blacks now. And if you can think back 
mm. to 80s. Just look at how hard working we were mm. then. Right? Look at there was no shame in an honest day's work. Yeah. A person would tell you they're Tyler. He feeds his family. He's mm. a Tyler. Guy's a painter. He feeds his family. He's proud. He's proud. Guy's a, a truck driver. As even when he's not driving trucks, the way he's walking, like, ah, you're more than a lot. Sure, but I know. Mommy, 34 times. You, know? you, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, we don't want to do that. We don't want to put, we don't want to roll our sleeves up. Mm. So, so, so let's not even make it about other people. Just ourselves. Yeah. If we're critical of ourselves, we know we don't want to put in the work, right? We we want to shortcut everything. And I always say to people, there is no shortcut. It's just about failing forward. Mm. Five steps forward, trip, fall over, get up and run. Two mm. steps, trip, fall over, get up and run. I, I tell I tell people. <coughs> I'm a 98% failure rate, mm. 2%. Two out of 100 I get right. Yeah. 98 times doesn't work. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you see the two. Of course. So, so it's like it's been said before. Life is about preparation and opportunity, mm. right? So the crossroads that those two meet an onlooker looks at and says, geez, Winston got lucky. Yes. So he hasn't seen the 10 years preparation and he hasn't seen the timing and spotting of that opportunity. Yeah. He's just caught it today at that crossroads and he's like, geez, this guy's lucky. So, you you know, you got to put in the work and you'll be a 10 night, 10 year overnight success. How do you, how do you keep your edge? One of my worries as a father is my children are going to grow up privileged and not see some of the things I've seen and not struggle through some of the things I've struggled through. That's going to be their struggle, so to speak. I worry about myself and my life becoming more comfortable, more privileged. How do you keep your edge? How do you ensure that you still have some level of struggle that keeps you going? I, I look at Elon Musk and him buying Twitter after all his business success, almost as an act of, I need to keep challenging myself with something new. Otherwise I lose that thing that I had in the first place. How do you keep your edge? I think always push yourself and be around people who stretch you. Okay. So you, so you need a healthy balance, right? So you need people who need a, a hand up, right? Because mm -hmm. that reminds you. Hey, I hey, used to be there. I used to be that yeah. guy, right? Then you need people who are on your level and you guys are, are fighting for it, yeah. right? And then you need the guy, the North Star, that hey, one day we're going to get there, right? Yeah. So I think if you create a system that your kids also appreciate that kind of of system, mm -hmm. they'd never feel too privileged because, you know. They have perspective. They have perspective, right? It's like training the fearful kid to box because you're like, I used to be there. You know, so yeah. I, I relive that moment. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You went pro. Yeah, I did. What but, happened? <clears throat> but by the time I'd, I'd gone pro. How old were you at the time? I was 19. Jeez. Right. Pro means you're getting paid to box. Yeah. Hectic. Right. So, 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 pro, you have to do like a qualifier. Okay. But I was so good at the time, like they were just calling me, just sign, we'll give you like a signing bonus. It was there, right? And I was losing the taste for the hard work. Honestly. Okay. I had a car, GTI. It was that guy. Sure. This money wasn't from boxing. It was. It was now starting. Do, do you know how much, if you don't mind, do you know how much boxers earn in this country? Uh, or how much they used to earn just as it, a... It's dropped now. Okay. For guys used to make some decent money. It, w it was livable, right? For each, for each boxing... Yeah, but also 
you had a sponsorship like ah. a clothing sponsor you had a vehicle okay maybe you got a, a sponsor from BMW or okay. golf then you have a nutrition okay. like team cuz they doing their thing you know cuz they associated their brand with you right so it'd be nice to bring that back and i i was sad to see that Casper Nyovest did a lot i think for boxing in south africa and highlighting it and the fights that he he mm. put on but i i don't think it trickled down the way it was supposed to because people just looked at the spectacle of the fight and i remember asking my brother this do you think people watching casper fight knock music or slick talk do you think it's getting young guys be like hey let me actually pick up the sport let me go into a into a gym and start hitting punching bags but i feel like it, it didn't translate which kind of made me sad and that would then hopefully get the sponsors and the people to revive the sport where oh baby jake now boting on tobela and we were a powerhouse in terms of boxing mm what what we need to understand collectively as south africans is anything that you don't manage you lose yeah you don't manage your health you lose your yeah. health you don't manage your car mm. by taking it for a service on time becomes unreliable mm. you don't manage your finances I call that maintenance in my in my belief system of penalism that you have to maintain yeah everything so anything that you don't manage mm. you lose you don't manage your relationships whether they uh platonic whether they <coughs> romantic yeah. whether they business relation you lose are you religious I've grown up in a religious home I'm I'm asking this because you you're reminding me of uh, the late Miles Monroe. Yeah. Who he, says he God says doesn't give you what you pray for, he gives you what you can manage. And if you can't manage 100 rand, you don't deserve a 1000 rand. And even if you get it, we see it on shows like I blew it yeah. on TV that if you haven't preparation opportunity, mm. if you haven't been preparing for that 5 million and you get raff lottery money, yeah. It's going to be gone very quickly. Worse than the fact that it's going to be gone, it puts you in a deeper hole. Mm. And I tell you why because now you've got 5 million right yeah so now your credit lines are open mm. right so you blow the money you got zero but you got credit lines mm. still because they know you the guy yeah so you take a loan for 500 you buy this you run a tab you, yeah before you look at it now you minus two mm. and When you started you were just at zero. You were just Maybe at zero. You had 20 rand. Sure. You know what I mean? But you went in a 2 million rand home, yeah. you know. So 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 yeah. Be Sorry, I, I I threw you off. You were explaining that you you went pro and and they signed you right. and that you were starting to not put in the work and you and yeah. when you don't manage something. So firstly, I'm starting to not put in the work. Right? Yeah. You thought you'd arrived. You are that guy now who's not scared of being hit. Yeah, not scared of being hit, believing the hype, mm. not making weight for fights. Uh then they they tax you like 20%, but I'm like, ah, ah come on. Take the money, let's have the fight. Yeah. You know, still win the fight, going to drag races, you got GTI, mm -hmm. doing the most. I was in an accident. Mm. Um car accident car accident being irresponsible yeah. uh, admittedly broke my pelvis in three places Shit. fractured my rib punctured lung it was a mess my old man was like I don't think this boxing thing is gonna work right mm. but I, i didn't have a plan b yeah good at this i've been doing it for a long time i was like no i'm going to get myself back into shape this is was got to mm -hmm. work took me about six years right six years yeah getting firstly my lungs like cuz of the punctured lung sure. just like i wasn't getting the kind of endurance i used to get yeah all right and my pelvis 
just the pain. Like even when I went for my runs now, the legs weren't, yeah. you know, like it was, you know. And then honestly, now you got to fight. You like a hundred and something from number one in SA, mm. three in Africa. You got to fight number... <laughs> 121, <laughs> number 100, you know? Yeah. Keep. So I got all the way back. I think it was number two again, ready to have a big fight. That's dope, by the way. Yeah, I was like, nah, That's dope, by the way. I'm back. I'm putting in the work. I get shot. Shot? Yeah. Like, uh, through the chest. Like, do. You know, when I looked, and it was through my pocket, and then, you know, everything stands still, so I could hear people say, oh, Winston shot in his heart. I'm like, wow, this is bad, you know? So I was like, oh, man. And the crazy thing about being shot at, you know when people tell you time stands still and all? Yeah. That's just, a, so, so you see the flash, you hear the bullet yeah. pass you, then you hear the bang. Flash, light, swing. Wow, you're like, oh my God. This is crazy. So he fired six times. So the six shot hit me. Like He was trying to hit you? I'm trying to figure out wh why, why did you get shot at? So... It's almost like hood politics, right? Okay. So there's different crews. Um, you a boxer. Newlands is colored. Yeah. Next door to Wamash. Yes. Okay. And there's wind twit that comes into Newlands. And you might be popular, but someone's saying, yeah, you're popular in the ring, but this is the street. Of course. Yeah, we don't box, we shoot. All of that. Let's see how strong you are when a bullet comes at you. When a bullet comes at you, especially these big guys, they start screaming for their mother when gunshots start mm -hmm. ringing. You know, they mm -hmm. go along, mm -hmm. along those, those lines. And it's sad because we kind of all know each other. Families know each other, you know. And then I had to return fire. Like, yeah, I had the will with all to pull my firearm, you know. And and I remember... You had a firearm? Yeah. Why? Because of upbringing and clicks, the space. The crazy part is my mom bought me a firearm. Before you carry on, I love the fact that you keep referencing your mom and your dad, meaning your your parents were present. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty dope. Yeah. Sorry. So, so your mom bought, bought you a, a cat. Jeez. Yeah. Because... My my, so there were four of us in in my family. Yeah, three brothers, one sister. Had an older brother, two older brothers, a sister, and myself. Mm. There's a big gap between myself and the rest of them. You know, I was an afterthought. <laughs> Black sheep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> your father was like, ah, one more for the road. <laughs> so, so when I was three. My brother was murdered, stabbed 72 times. 72? Yeah. So By a, an individual? No, a couple of people. It was a mob attack? Yeah. So it just changed the entire dynamic in my family. My mother became super religious. You know, now church, you know, we... So, but... This might also explain why your dad wanted you to take up boxing. Yeah. It wasn't just for, oh, be confident. It's yeah. actually, you need to survive, boy. Yeah. And you look a bit soft. Yeah. But when I was 16, my mom started to get worried. She said, Winston, people are scared of you. They used to be scared of your brother. And they ganged up on him and they killed him. And how would, I literally had to, to clean his blood off the street. So, when you, you turn 18, I need you to buy a gun. 
she went, she bought it, chose one. She said, listen, if anything should happen, you have a responsibility to try and come home. You make it home, whatever that means. I don't mean go and kill people. I'm glad you don't drink, which means you're responsible. You were raised in the church, your mother's god fiery. But you have to try your darnest to come home, whatever happened. And when I was shot, I said, buddy, I'm going to make it home. But only one of us is going to make it home in this exchange. It was a crazy thing because I returned fire. Now we're both getting rushed to hospital. Get to the hospital, we next to each other. They hook us up to the heart machines. So I'm facing this way, he's facing me. I'm like, yo, we bad delay. You know, then I hear uh, his machines <laughs> clear. Flat line. Mm. I'm like, okay. One of us is not making it home. Then friends bust in, like one of the friends from, from the area, and he was drunk, right? But this guy had been stabbed so many times, he knew how to read the heart machines and stuff. So he's like, hey, Winston, your blood pressure is dropping. I'm going to get the doctor here. They need to do something, you know. And he's like, uh, give me your watch, you know, your jewelry and stuff. So I take my watch. He's like, oh, that's a nice one. <laughs> if you die, I'm keeping it. <laughs> I'm like, that's such a nice guy. I had a ring, so I, I also took off my... He said, no, don't take off the ring. That's bad luck. Like, you're sure if you take off the ring, you'll you definitely die. Definitely gonna, not going to make okay, it. Okay, now I'm holding on to every word this guy is saying, right? He's like, Winston. So he calls the doctor. The doctor's like, listen, we're trying to work here. you got to get out. He kicks up such a fuss. The doctor says, okay, okay, just leave him in here. So he's like... Winston, they need to go into your lung now. They need to pop your lung because you, you, your lung's taking in blood mm. and you, you'll drown in your blood if, you, if, if they don't do something. This is after the punctured lung from the accident. Yeah, this is now punctured from being shot. Because it's, yeah. I'm like, oh. So I look at the doctor. The doctor says, hey, he's right. So the doctor says, yeah, we, we're going to go in. So I said, hey, doc. Is it gonna be like sore? The doctor says, look, not like being shot. <laughs> I said, when you gonna do it? He takes this thing from behind his back and hits me. Yes, now yes. Ha! the pain of like, oh, shit. So he goes in, but it's like a stab. Hmm. And then they put this pipe in, but then I like oh, I can't breathe. So he's like don't worry, we got you. See, now the machine's right. Mm. Don't worry, I've been stabbed. I can see this thing. You come in, you're getting there. You get... So, but he, he spoke me through it. Like, so, you know, so so that kept me going. And then Zani walks in, because this is, Zani walks in, like, because he was coming to see me. Mm. So when he walks in, I can see in his face, he's like, yo. This is serious. So I try and lighten the moment. <laughs> I'm like, Zani, look what they did to my shirt. <laughs> this was a nice shirt. Because <laughs> they cut the shirt, you know, shit. trying to go in. They don't still yeah, open. Yeah. They just cut. And... How, how's the pain of being shot? Do you remember? It just happens too quickly. You don't even know you're shot. Just happens too quickly mm. you don't you feel a sting but you don't know that you're shot the fear and terror of people in people's eyes when yes. they look at you tell you something's wrong because sure. you don't understand that you're shot but everyone you look at looks like they seeing a dead person yeah then you're like what the then you're like oh shit I, uh, you know i'd like to ask your so, opinion on why you think 
colored neighborhoods are so violent and so messed up and so gang riddled. If it's an influence of movies, back in the day we used to watch Boys in the Hood, Menace to Society, we had the rappers, the Tupacs, East Coast, West Coast. Is, is it something else? Because to this day, I mean, in, in places like, of course, the Cape Flats and those areas, but I live close to an area like Westbury, where it's become a norm. Even when you speak to the aunties there, they're like, ah, this happens every now and then. What, what's wrong with colored areas? What's wrong with, with colored people? And why are they so violent amongst each other? Look, I, I can't answer for co- all colored people, but I can tell you what I think it is. I think there's an element of fear of being. First, you're a minority, right? Yeah. And Colored people are a minority in this country. they yeah. 8% white, I think 8, 9% colored. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? You're a minority, right? And then a lot of the time, colored people will feel like they're not accepted you know, yeah. on either side, yeah. you know. And they're not. Realistically, let's be honest. Yeah. White people look down on coloreds. Black people themselves are you racist know? towards coloreds. You know, so what they then do is click up. Yeah. So even if you're going to a club, you kind of need to click up. But that clicking up now comes with its own politics, mm. right? And then obviously also clicks stay together if they're making money. And now they're not generally making clean money. Yeah. So they start making street money. Because there aren't opportunities, Mas. Yeah. And if you didn't do well at school, uh, if you weren't an athlete, uh, of which some of our top athletes in this country are, are coloured. Yeah. Actually, I think the top athletes in this country are coloured. You know? All of them. Rugby, cricket, soccer. You know? And like even other sports, even boxing, they do yeah. well. So if you weren't in there... Now you you know you 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 on the street, mm. and then then street politics comes into it, yeah. you know, and also in this country generally violence is is like a commodity. Mm. Violence is is a thing. You can trade with violence. Yeah. You can negotiate with violence. People see violence as you're very right. It is a currency. I I went to a college school by the way before. Before Mandela allowed us to study with white kids, I was in a neighborhood called Fairley in Newcastle. That's the colored area. I went to pre-primary there. I went to primary school at a school called Chelmsford. And even from that age, guys were very big on, say, can you fight, brah? Yes. No, I can fucking moor you. Let's go outside now. And um, then when you go to parts of KZN, the northern parts, I'm seeing Angutu, when I'd visit his family there, the guys are very big on hierarchy. It's what you're saying about... When you get there, they're like, we are also ruler. I mean, I'm not shy, I mean. And then if you move the biggest guy there, automatically you become the boss there. From when I was 14, 13, 14, first day of school, I introduced myself to the class and said, hi, my name is Winston, guys. I'm going to be in your class. I personally think I can hit the whole class. Boom. If there's any disputes, let's sort them out after school. By grade seven, there was a short guy, Basil Green. He said, hey, guys, my name's Basil. I'm the smallest. Please don't try and bully me. That's Winston. He thinks he can eat the whole class. <laughs> if there's anyone that has any disputes, we can sort it out after school. You know? Speak to Winston. <laughs> so it was that, because it was a currency. But Being do you think do you think that culture is potentially healthy? No. no. So, so the, the colored neighborhoods are, are not in a good state. But I look at the military, America loves fighting and war. Mm. All their movies that win Oscars are the war movies. They big on, I'm an American, I'm a patriot. We carry guns and it's made them sort of strong. When you look at us compared to our children and other younger generations, these soft kids and do you think there's potentially something healthy in a culture where kids are like, you guys need to feel each other out, especially for the boys? I just think it's unchanneled. Okay. You know what I mean? I think it's unchanneled. Because a lot of it is actually being a coward. Because 
a lot of these gang things aren't one on one. Yeah, it's mob. Yeah, it's mob. Uh, it's a cunning. He wasn't ready for you to, yes, you know, shoot him. And I mean, if if you even look at, you know, God rest his soul, AKA, mm. he he had no idea he was. They didn't even shot. face him. They Took didn't him from the back. even. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so I'm saying we can't glorify that kind of 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 thinking that that violence is the answer. Yeah. We we need to channel you know our 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 anger. We need to channel our aggression. Mm. You know, um aggression unchanneled is actually just fear and 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 kicking up a ruckus, because the guy who's really gonna do something does it twice, then says, "You know, I might slap you." He's been slapping you. <laughs> <laughs> that guy, <laughs> he slapped you three times already, <laughs> and now he's like, "If you don't stop, I'll slap you." <laughs> I've heard that one. <laughs> yeah, you know, what? Yeah, you know no, you're what right. Mean? So, so the guy who's jumping on the table and saying, "Hey, I go blank," you know me. Ah, nah, come on, come on, guys, come on. Let's let's just calm down. So I think we need to refocus our energies. Sports. We need, we need to get people into sports. We need to give people hope. Yeah. And and that's why for me, the Duduzani Zuma campaign was such a an important thing, and. It was the thinking that said we need to change the political spectrum. We need to turn politics from the politics of desperation to mm -hmm. the politics of inspiration. We need to inspire our people to to put forward the best version of themselves, right? And we need other young people to say, actually, if the Studuzani guy can do it, I can do it too, mm -hmm. right? And honesty. Hats off to our leaders, our old leaders who've done what they've done. But times have changed. I yeah. don't think the soldier, the 1980 soldier, the 1994 soldier, is the soldier that's required now. Mm. It's not fit for purpose, right? But remember, <laughs> you'll only change if the pain and inconvenience of changing is less than the pain of staying the same. 100%. You know what I mean? 100%. I'd like so, to hear your thoughts. Sorry. Please, please continue. Sorry to interject. So I'm saying the pain of things the way they are now mm. is too much to bear. So the pain of change has got to be less than this. Yeah. Right? So I'm excited because it's going to reinvigorate mm. people. And I always say to people who say, ah, I don't want to get involved. I said, guys, it's like us being in a bus. We can all drive here. Yeah. yeah. Can drive. Yeah. Guys, this bus is going off the road. It's now hitting barriers. I say to you, hey, Pino, you say, yeah, yeah. You say, hey, why don't you? You say, ah, I don't want to get involved. I'm like, sure. hey, chief. We're all going to die here. Yes. You know, it's at that point. So, so, so we are in this bus called mm. South Africa. All of us. It's not asking if you're black, if you're white. We are all in this bus. So, the skilled people who are able to contribute, let them contribute. And the ones who aren't so skilled, let them get in where they fit in. Yeah. Right? Because a skill is something you develop over time. So you might not be fit to to drive the bus now, but in time you might be exactly what the doctor ordered. Yeah. The doctor ordered. So I'm saying this to say more than the fact that Duduzani is a game changer, which I believe he is, mm -hmm. it's the invigoration and 
the excitement it's going to spark up, the excitement of the conversation, even the naysayers, at least they're having the conversation yeah. now, as opposed to we, you know, we weren't even talking about it. Yeah. And and I and I, I say it to say that, you know, young people kind of run the house. A guy who study runs his house. Mm. He looks after Uko, Uko, he looks after. And I always say to that guy, would you take your entire budget, your salary, right, and give it to Gran and say, listen, you sort out the house. Go pay everything, DSTV, Wi-Fi, whatever you want to pay. You wouldn't do that. Mm. Not because of anything. You feel like, okay, she's gone along in years yeah. now she's 70 75 she needs to chill sure i'm gonna figure this out i'm gonna stretch the box i'm gonna see where where we do we need to do what we need to do right you that's normal yeah but people are getting old bro they can't use apps they don't understand in cues no and and itama who's 80 75 runs the country they're not fit to run the house, according to you, right? You're saying, no, this is too much pressure. Lights, Wi-Fi, <laughs> DSTV, I, I, I. They must run the whole country. Oh, my brother, we, we are not being practical now. And the problem is we are blaming someone else. It's us. It's all of us. Mm. We, we okay. We're the majority. Young people, we're the majority. Mm. So if it's happening, it's because we allow it to happen. Right, they, they, we can't live life retrospectively through the through the review. You know, I think it was Steve Harvey who says, "There's a reason your review's this big and your windshield's this big, mm. right? Because it's important to see where you come from. Sure, but what's more important is where you're going. Boom. And a lot of our people, the review mirror is this big, yes, and the windscreen's this big. So when you say why are we here? You say, I ah, even OR told us. <laughs> you see, he knows the history. And you say, okay, from here, where are we going? Uh, I don't know. No, we, 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 we're working on that. We, we need to uh, socialize a few ideas. <laughs> no, my brother. No, my brother. What's more important is where we're going. Don't let your past hold you captive. And, and that's the big lesson here. We, we all live in South Africa looking from looking at it from the review and that's something we need to we need to look at getting over. Jeez, that's beautiful. Tutuzane Zuma is one of my favorite candidates as well. I'd like to hear your thoughts on especially as a colored guy, especially as someone who's kind of changed his life a lot around, your thoughts on, on Gaten McKenzie. Not from a presidential candidate perspective, but just as a guy who is putting in work and is also trying to inspire certain people. Look, I've met Gaten once or twice. Mm. I've engaged him once. So I don't know him enough sure. to, to make an informed assessment. Sure. But what I can say is, at least the guy is doing something. Yes. He's injecting some energy. Yes. Right? Into it. And generally, as, as a rule, mm. right? I've actually broken my own rule by making a comment on Gaten because even when I discussed it with Duduzani, I said, can we make this campaign not about anyone else, right? Because when you go to an interview, you don't mm. speak about the other guy who wants the job. Sure. Right? Sure. When you meet a lady of interest, you don't say, I heard Penuel also likes you, but he's bad. <laughs> I'm good. You know what I mean? Now the lady didn't know Penuel. She Who's didn't that? Know he li- now will- she's Googling, hey, oh, yes. a famous guy likes me. Okay, let's just park <laughs> there. You know? So, so, so I'm not going to extrapolate too much on, yeah. on, on Kate and his person. I'm just going to say it's encouraging that there are different people yeah. coming and, and rolling up their sleeves. Yeah. But the idea 
of this finger pointing and saying whose fault it was and talking about the other guy who wants the same job. We should move away from that. Mm. If you're the guy for the job, tell me why you're the guy. Sure. You know what I mean? And let's talk about that and let's get busy. Mm. But you now, the guy who's telling me, no, Penuali saw Gales, you know what I mean? Now it's like, now she's like, okay, maybe I'll give Penuali a try. <laughs> I'm not looking for anything serious. You know what I mean? <laughs> So, yeah. uh, you you were still telling us your journey and you had your car accident. You recovered after six years. Um, you went all the way from in the hundreds back to number two. And then you got shot. Yeah. Wow. Um, what, what happens from there? Now I have to have a sobering conversation with myself. Yeah. Right? And I'm like, yo, this, this boxing thing's not going to happen. Yeah. Now I have to figure out where to from here. You didn't have a plan B. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. I was that good and that committed. That sure. I was like, no, I don't need a plan B. You know. So I said, "Listen, am I trying to reinvent the wheel? Are there no people in my neighborhood that have made a success of their lives, as per what I would call success? Mm-hmm. You know, because." You only know what you know. You don't know what you don't. Hundred percent. So I I wrote um, a list of people I thought who were successful, and I went to see them. That's beautiful, and, by the way. And they were like, ah, "Who are you? You just come here, no appointment. What do you want? You know that kind of vibe." But once you get past that, yeah, right, they're willing to tell you their story. It's a form of selling that. Yeah. Having to deal with rejection, but yeah, being yeah. like, I'm, I want to learn from you. Yeah. yeah. I want to learn from you. So, so, and it's quite flattering. They, they honored that you, you know, you, yeah. you're actually saying, listen, you're the guy and I need to, to learn from you. And then I picked up common characteristics. Here, yeah. You know, one, they had average ability. In most things, yeah, but one thing or two things they were really high on, yeah. Whatever that one thing was, it was like night and day yeah. from a normal guy to you know, yeah. it's like it's like Tuduzani. Tuduzani has the ability to make you feel welcome, yeah, not like a normal guy when sure. he greets you, you're like, ah, ah, you're like, yeah, maybe, maybe I'm this guy, knows maybe I'm me. actually important hey. in life. Ah! Maybe, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm important. You know what I mean? So, so, so they had that that peak. And the other thing is, when they made a decision, they followed through. All of them. When they made a decision to do something, they followed through. All of them. So I was like, and then the one was really interesting conversation. The guy said, he said, what do you want to say? Hey, I want to make lots of money. I must be honest with you. He said, okay, are you like a brilliant guy? I said, what do you mean? I think I'm pretty, pretty sharp. He's like, no, no. I mean, like, before you, people couldn't chew their food. They used to have to suck their food mm, and, mm, mm, and mash mm, it. Mm, you mm, invented mm. teeth. Now they chew. You know, that kind yeah. of guy. Game changer guy. I said, no, I'm not that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he said, okay. Do you have a skill, like a a, a scarce skill? Sure. Are you like a heart surgeon, like you know what I mean? Like yeah. there's there's no one here to do this surgery at Kid Winston. Sure. You'll be fine. I said, no, I understand that right now. I'm not that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he said, okay. Here's my final one. How are you with people? I said, I think I'm pretty good with people. He said, remember, whatever you're trying to achieve, a person or a group of people have the power to give it to you. They usually give it to you for a currency, which is sometimes money, but not all the time. So let me give you an example. You give a big on the street corner, 20 bucks. You'd say, ah, I just gave them for nothing. That's not true. 
No, you put in all. No, I really did give them for nothing. If that beggar took that 20 bucks and took a lighter and burnt it, what would you do? Like, ah, that changes it. Yeah. It changes it because when you gave the beggar, you expected some kind of appreciation. Mm. And the appreciation was the currency you, you were in for. Mm. You wanted some kind of response, yeah. some kind of thank you to make you feel a certain way. Yeah. Because if you weren't in for anything, when they burnt it, you wouldn't feel anything. Yeah. But I guarantee you now, someone burns your money, yes. you lose it. It's not even your money anyway. You gave it away. Sure, it's his money. For now. nothing. Yeah. Isn't you said, ah, I gave him for nothing. No, you'd, you'd probably want to fight about it. Yeah. So, so there was a currency. When you meet a lady and you're about to risk it all, right? There's a currency there. There's mm. a feeling. And most times, the greatest leaders, good or the bad, depending on which side of the fence you stand, have an ability to make people feel, I'm good to risk it all on this guy. So if you understand human capital and understand people and are able to deal and touch and add value to people's lives in that way, forget the first two. <laughs> I said, I'm a boy, I'm a Are you at liberty to mention some of these people you met? Uh, met? Yeah, yeah. Not their full names, but just to give them shout outs. Look, let me give the last guy the shout out because okay. I think he he changed everything. His name was Andre van der Bale. Yeah. Yeah, he runs a, a security firm up in, in Durban. Yeah. Yeah. That's shout out, dope. Andre. That's pretty dope. And then from there, you were like, okay. I was like, okay, let me sit out on this. The biggest thing that you're, you're dropping now, because I'm having these glowing moments from what you're saying, is between what you're looking for between where you are and what you're looking for are people or a person. Yeah. Doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. And we forget that. And people focus so much on certificates, Hello. papers. All of those things need a human being somewhere to give you a green light. Number yeah. one. And number two, very important, because again, this is also one of my principles of penalism. There's something called value over money, where money is just a tool can store value, it can be a medium of exchange, but there are other forms of currency and value that you can use. You can be like, I don't have any money. And you're like, that's that's fine. That's just one currency. What other kinds of value currencies can you use to get a person or people to allow you into a certain space? You see, what we don't understand is it's always up to a person, right? You could say, Winston, I like your watch. Mm. I'm going to give you two million rand for that watch. Mm. And I could still say no. You understand? Yeah. It's up to me. So even when you say the value, we give the value to money. 100%. We give the value to crypto. We give the value to each other. Mm. You might say, I'm pretty good, but value is in the other person's mind. Yes. Right? So even when you do that course or get that degree, there's still another person on the other side of that. You can be totally compliant, mm -hmm. right? And I not like you because mm -hmm. maybe you were rude or whatever. Sure. I won't give you the job. But the other guy who's not compliant but is just a culture fit people's person, we can make him compliant and give him the job. Value is in the other person's mind and there are people at the other side of whatever you're trying to achieve. So Ungai Jelly, I'm a doctor now, you know. So she's gonna pop off my yes. No, it's not. We saw doctors marching in the streets because they're not getting jobs. You know what I mean? Because you are not appreciating that there's a person on the other side of that skill. And if you don't handle them mm. in a way that they feel valued and feel appreciated, that's the last interaction you can have with that person. So it's always people. That's why mm. 
what Andre said about number three, number three was always the one. It's always people centered. When we started the the Tuduzani journey, mm. guess the advice, right? So so one of the first things we were told is you need to consult all the elders and and current leadership. Mm. They could steer you, you know, in the right direction. And our rebuttal to that was, but we're working for the people. Yes. Why are we consulting the leaders? Who's the boss here? Aren't the people in charge? Let's go to the people. Mm. If they see value in what we do, they'll impose us on the leaders. Right? Boom. Because they're in charge. Right? And people need to know that they're in mm. charge. And even the discussions we had with some of the elders, they're like, ah, guys, you don't understand politics. This is a science. <laughs> this is this. <laughs> this is that. But I put it to you that a lot of our leaders have forgotten it's the people. Yes. Not those gatekeepers or s- who says, ah, it's better my numbers. Krumanam, for it to a. Was a shy one, two, one, two, one, two. <laughs> Guys will vote. Eh? You're so driven. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Because that's what they say. You know, yeah. you, you can ask you, it's better my numbers. <laughs> no, guys. We need to be responsible to our constituency. Mm. Be responsible. And it's not even like a large scale. Duduzani started in Ward 11. Mm-hmm. Not a big ward, not a big anything. Yeah. But you make a difference where you are with the little you have, and that starts to trickle on. Yeah. And now it's gone from, ah, maybe it's a joke, haha, to, okay, these guys might be onto something. Mm-hmm. And I'm also saying, and I say this to many young people, because people are like, are you going to be his DP? I I said, not a chance. I have no interest in politics. But for the fact that there's a leader here who's capable and he needs our support. Mm. Because you don't need a title to make a difference. Real leaders don't need a title. You don't need a title they just need to, to make a difference. Yeah. And leadership's an action. Yeah. It's not words. It's an action. And you say, hey, this guy has taken action. And once you understand that and appreciate that, no title will affirm you. No title will make you a leader. You will be a leader because you'll take the necessary action. So that's the ethos around this whole thing. You know. Shout out to Andre van der Peel. Yeah. You spoke about culture fit and it triggered in my mind a book that a lot of people should read called And Then They Fired Me by Yanni Muton, the founder of PSG. PSG invested in Kuro, in, invest in the founding of Kuro, in the founding of Capitec, Pioneer Foods at some point. He was called the, the Bura Buffett because the returns he, he made at PSG were phenomenal. Okay. He says in his book at some point that when he picks candidates to work for PSG, the academic stuff is, is pretty cool, it's dope. It means you're capable and competent. Mm-hmm. But he says he'd rather take a highly intelligent kid, um, highly intelligent kid that, that's never played sports. He'd rather push them to the side and take the child that played third team, fourth team sports and is kind of average in terms mm-hmm. of their academic performance because they understand teamwork. Mm. They understand winning and losing. They understand going to practice every week, which are which are culture fit things that we want here. Mm. The fact that you were a genius with distinctions, but you were living in the library alone, you wrote your exams alone, you don't know how to speak to people. We'd rather take that kid that he was in the third, fourth team, but everyone loved him. Everyone understood him, and he understands the, the value of a team. Andre van der Peel then lights a huge spark in your head. What do you do from that point? So now I set out to meet people, meet the right people, start to... <clears throat> and you're already on that journey, by the way. Yeah. He was prophesying something that was already in action because you'd already made the decision that these are the people that have yeah. the answers. Yeah. 
at the time I didn't know that, right? Yeah. I didn't know that that's what I need. But yeah. but he lights it. Yeah. He lights the 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 fuse, and then I start set out setting out to to meet people, start engaging, and one of the interesting people I met was Tuduzani. Yeah. But I met him at a time where it wasn't popular to be Tuduzani's friend. Yeah. 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 Right? Was it at a time where his dad was accused of a whole host of things? Mm. There was, especially people from my hoods. Yeah. You know, they were like, oh no, this guy takes over the country. We're done. Let's go to Australia. You know. And and I found Tuzani to be a cool cool guy, mm. and his dad was my my friend's dad, and it was yeah. cool. And so we hit it off from there. Yeah. And and there was a stillness of mind. He had a, a certain focus, and more importantly, if he committed to something, he did it. Now Tuzani has a, a crazy discipline. Kind of discipline. You don't wh- drink. No, he doesn't drink as well. No. Okay. So crazy discipline. I'll give you an example. Duzani says, "We're eating meat in Kansa, right? So we're eating meat. Like yeah. we, we eat." He says, "Hey, Winston, I'm I'm like, hey, how's this meat? It's like, <laughs> oh, this is dope." He says, "You know what? I'm gonna try not eat meat for a while." I'm like, why? You don't like the meat? He's like, no, no, I like the meat. But I just wanna see if I could not eat it. Yeah. I'm like, you're on your own on there. Definitely <laughs> on your own there, bro. Jim, you carry I on. Mean, even, I eat. <laughs> even today, he's yeah, he's on his own there. Shame. You know what I mean? So he eats with me that that day. Yeah. And after that, he doesn't eat meat for two years. <sighs> two years. Six months later, I'll be like, oh, let's. He's like, no, no, I'll have the veg, whatever you carry on. For two years. After two years, he says, Winston, it's exactly two years now. I haven't eaten it. Let's go have some meat. I'm like, ah, this guy. So, So this speaks to what I was saying earlier about keeping your edge. Because I find a lot of guys, let's say yourself, that no matter how successful you get, you're like, Every now and then I get into a boxing ring just to do that thing. Every yeah. now and then when I feel like maybe I'm slipping-ish. If you're a smoker, you're like, let me just quit smoking. If you're a drinker, you're like, let me not drink. Or let me constantly challenge. It's easy, the physical, yeah. but most of the work is the psychological. Yeah. I'm not going to eat meat, not because I'm getting fat. It's because there's a. I'm, I constantly need to be in training. And small things like this show me to myself that the I'm abilities charge. and the yeah. powers that I have yeah I think that's pretty dope yeah that for me like dope so you're chilling with this crazy guy who decides to not eat meat for two years like, oh, this guy cannot focus. eat meat yeah I'm like no we're not doing that but <laughs> yo <laughs> this is dope <laughs> this is crazy you know and at that time ah, I need to add this sorry before you carry on my sister in her, I think it was her matric year, shout out to my sister Penrose. The shout beginning out. of the year said she was not going to eat meat for a year. My brother and I laughed. We joked about it so long. Beginning of the year, end of the year. It, it, to this day, my sister's 25 now, I think. To this day, whenever I want to criticize, judge my sister, I remember that small act that made me gain a certain respect for her, which she'll never lose just yeah. for that. She didn't eat meat for a year. And I remember 31st of December came meat. No, tomorrow. Tomorrow, we went to and buy 24 chicken, lick and no. hot wings. And we went in, boy. I thought she was on a crack. I even told her, look, no pressure. We're not even... You've made six months. I'm like, She's <laughs> like, it's just something I wanted to prove to myself. And I thought that was pretty dope. Sorry. So yeah. shout out to her. Shout out to Tutuzane. And I guess anyone else who sets those mini challenges, which do the most amazing things for your mind. Yeah. Sorry, mm. please continue. Crazy. So, so I worked at a call center, right? Mm. And so we're having conversations. I'm like, hey, Tuzani, 
in business. Do you know anyone in business who started a business, did well, and they like crazy successful? Yeah. He's like, yeah, I know plenty of people. I'm like, do you know, I don't know one person in my family, because we were speaking in our family. I'm not yeah. talking about far. I'm saying in my family who's done that, a cousin. A, I don't know anyone who's. He's like, no, it's. I said, you know, even if I tell my father I'm gonna do business, he'll 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 laugh at me and say, you know, you must be tired. It's the boxing, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So that was the first thing I was like, hey, actually, there's another person who knows people who you know mm-hmm. who get into the business thing, and then fast forward. I see. I find an opportunity to get into the fuel business, you know, and do the one transaction, lose money on it because sure. I didn't calculate for shrinkage, stock loss. What, what does that mean to a normal person that you did a fuel transaction? So basically, I did a trade. Someone wanted forty thousand liters of fuel. Okay. Right. Where, where do you find these people? Was it online? Was it word of mouth? No, no, no. Well, you walk to truck stops. You walk to truck yards. You get a this referral. Is you. Yeah, yeah. Hustling, looking there's for opportunities. No, there's no one else, my brother. You you do Shit. it yourself. You know? Okay. You're one man show. So you get there, and you know, and and the first time they say no, and they say no, no, so they're like, yes, this, I'm just saying yes. So that I can prove you're a joke and this thing's not going to work or get you off my back. 98% failure rate, boy. Yeah, yeah, that's me, right? Do the deal. A transaction happens, I'm stoked. But when I get paid, I see, like, I'm one five less. Shit, what miscalculated. Happened? Yeah, the transport. What's one five? 1,500. Yes, yes. You know, short. I'm like, ah! And for me, at that time, yo, boy, you know, like... Ah. You're still working in the call center? Yeah. Yeah, look, 1.5, yeah. please. 25% of my... my oh, you guys are getting paid decently. For no, some I people, I can imagine that's half of their... No, I was a supervisor. Oh, also, oh that's why yeah. you were getting paid well. Yeah. 25%. Yeah, you know. 6,000 a month. Yeah. Come on, boy. Serious. Balling. Yeah. So then... I was like, oh, okay, this happens. When you load the truck at this temperature, when it cools down, you lose so many liters. Okay, if you don't watch the truck, the guys sift out a bit, oh. you, know, you know what I mean? Okay, when the truck's delayed, there's a reason for that, check that, you know? So essentially you buy a certain amount of fuel. Yeah. By the time it gets to the customer. Yeah. And that's why when you get paid, you get paid for what you deliver. But you're like, but that's not what. Yeah, hundred percent. And you must know, in forty thousand liters of fuel, two hundred liters is nothing. Hmm. Two hundred liters times twenty rand. Hmm, hmm, hmm. It's four k. You see, you know. You're so, making me think of views on social media for us, because in South Africa you get about four cents for an ad that's watched. You see? So you have to explain to kids that, hey, look, we're making four cents, boy. You see? So. Yeah. So so start to figure out that out, you know. And also, there's levels. So he was doing deals at a different level. So, so it didn't make sense for us to do anything together yet. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. Firstly, I I hadn't paid my school fees. Hmm. I wasn't at the level, you know, but... Please, can you just break that down quickly? What do you mean you hadn't paid your school fees? Meaning you hadn't lost, you hadn't... Like school fees in the streets, the school of hard knocks. Not even in the streets, because business people, their school fees to interact. You know what I mean? That that one five, put that down in school School fees. fees. It's the school of hard knocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paying school fees. You know, Yeah. yeah. So, so... But there's levels, Mm. right? Now, as I was going through that, now friends are starting to be in my, yeah, ah, this design is supposed to be your friend. 
but look at the deals he's doing. Mm. Why is he not putting you on? Mm. Because there's this big thing that someone must wave a, a magic wand sure. and it puts you on. Then you wake up, hey, I'm on now, mm. you know? I want to say uh, something about that. Please you know? carry on. Ha, ah, he's not your friend. If he was uh, uh, my friend, you've been through thick and thin with him when people were saying, hey, all those kinds of things and you're not on. And I was like, but the person for me that had a, like a very impactful discussion when it came to my relationship or friendship with Duduzani was my mom. Mm. So before she passed, she called me and she said, boy, I want to have a conversation with you. Like, I, Shout out to your mom for saving your life, for yeah. getting you a gun, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Just before we forget. Ah, shout out. <laughs> so I was like, said oh, Clover, uh, no? Yeah. So I was like, okay, this is another one of those conversations. I heard you were waving your gun or whatever, you know, because this is a serious conversation. So it can't be, it's not a a lighthearted. I said, yes, mom. She said, you see that Zuma boy that you're friends with? I said, yes. She said, I want you to stay very close to that boy. I said, why? She says, you must help him. And he's going to help you. He's going to go very far, that boy. I said, what do you mean? She said, listen to me, I'm your mother. That boy's respect is on another level. He, he crouches down when he speaks to me. His respect is going to take him places. You just hold on to his cocktails and you go on. And support him wherever you can because he's a good person and he loves you a lot. Listen to the words of your mother. That's all I'm saying. I was like, yeah, yeah. She said, no, I'm telling you this. Before I die, I need you to listen to me. I was like, okay, Ma, I promise I'll support him and I'll go with him. And that was that. And then a few years later, not long after that, she passed away. And I was like, oh, okay, me and this dude, we're in this boy. Sure. You know? And so as the business side started, what my mom started saying to Duzani had that upward trajectory yeah. and then came his storms. On the upward trajectory, we were a plane full, B. When the jets charted, everyone's in it. You know what I mean? On the downward ride, <laughs> ah, wait. It's two passengers left. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. People are, are sending you takes in, wait. It's not like you went to school with the guy. <laughs> Come on. Just, come on. You're going to get us all in. You, sure. I mean, you you know, and I'm like, nah, guys, I'm riding this one, you know, till the wheels fall off. And also it, it did something for me. It was a test of character because mm. I truly appreciate struggle, you know. Uh, I always say, like, when I used to fight, I used to be so stoked to be in the fight, like whether mm -hmm. it's a boxing match, it's so amped up for it. When I to go into the ring, I used to do a small prayer, but I used to pray for my opponent, like, God, please help him really, <laughs> really be strong. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to an awesome fight, and I know if he's at his best, it's gonna bring out the best in him. Yeah. And sometimes, like the first shot, maybe it hit me like a really hard shot. Sometimes I'd say loudly, like, yeah, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, this is dope. It's on, you know? Yeah. Now, if pray, that guy pray, is pray, not ready for a pray. fight, he's in for a long night. Because I am for so happy opponents. to be with him. <laughs> praying for strong opponents so that you can become stronger. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So if he is not ready to go through it, Jeez. my brother, he is in for it. You know what I mean? So, 
So that's the kind of yeah. So, so I appreciate those kind of friends because I'm that kind of friend. Yeah. Because because that now builds character, that separates the men from the boys. Yeah. It it just clears up because sometimes there's so many now you're my best friend you're my second best friend you during those and, times <laughs> and let it eat the wall sure ah now you only got maybe mrs mm. camera guy saying wait i no I, yeah, I, in, this is beyond us as in uh, that jiu-jitsu thing i'm really trying it i'm gonna try and go pro sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? he's giving you a plausible excuse <laughs> the sound guy saying i put to but we love you. It's of not course, that we don't love course, you. Just, of course, but eesh. just we don't love you like your wife. Sure. You know, you, you, you know, so that kind of thing. But that for me was was everything. Mm. And then I mean it becomes the focus on Tuzani was an unnatural, like Gupta, Nando's ad. Yo, 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 every time you're thinking of an ad, eh, your friend's going to come <laughs> on, you know? And then I said, you know, at some point, to Zani, it's a uh, margin, what's it, of diminishing returns, mm. the rule of diminishing returns, right? Because at some point, it's just so much focus on you that it has the opposite effect. Mm. The law of diminishing returns. Mm. It has the opposite effect now. So, so bad boy, no good, no good, no good. Mm. After a while, it's a Bobby Brown effect. Mm. Like, okay, is he really a bad boy, or mm. is he, or is he kind of? It's not cool? as effective anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Okay, is he really a bad boy? Hey, got the loud walk. You understand? Yeah. Now it's starting to have that effect. I said, bro, let's roll with it. You know, mm. and I, and. There's been little learnings in this entire, entire uh, situation, unfair as, as it, 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 it was, because there were some things that were just unfair. Like, I mean, there are people who's, who've killed people in this country. Yeah. There's bank robbers. Their accounts are not closed. Of course. To Zani's accounts are closed. I said this to him, yeah. serial rapists, serial murderers have got bank accounts in this country. Yeah. To Zani Khan. And you ask yourself, what do these people fear so much that economically they've killed, they've banished they've this guy. They've killed him. You know what I mean? They've literally killed him. If we live in a money country and yeah. you don't have an, an ability to transact, exactly. it means they've killed your You're heart. You're dead. You are dead. Because none of us can live without accounts. Yeah. None of us. And and how is that fair? So you ask yourself. But I also realize that as you confront situations and you approach life, you change the situation. Let me give you an example. If I were to get up, just stand up, mm -hmm. you would change your posture. Yes. Because I've stood. So if you were like this, sure. you are now like this, right? If I were to get up, and be pleasant, your posture would be different. If I were to get up and be aggressive, mm. your posture would, you'd probably stand up yes. and, and put on an aggressive posture. Because now, the way I've confronted the situation or life is changing it. Mm. The example that speaks to that is we approach the court. We're getting to one of to Zani's court dates, and there's a horde of, of people screaming, ah, so mama's got a jail, singing down, down, Shalozi, to Tuzani songs. To Tuzani in the car, he's with me. I see them in the corner of my eye. He doesn't, because he's focusing on the case, like, you know, and I realized that he hasn't seen him, so I don't want to distract him by saying, oh, these people here, yeah. so I'm listening to what he's saying. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, it's going to be a rough one, but I say to him, listen, it's going to be great. Let's just look good about mm -hmm. how we do this, you know, you know, you know. Let's, let's make it look good. Do your thing, brother. I'm with you. We get out the car. Now, he sees a crowd of people, 
and he thinks they are here to support him. Yeah. So he goes straight to them with a killer smile and is genuinely so happy to mm. see them. As he does that, the first person he hugs, everyone now wants a picture. They start screaming. Now the songs, everything, the whole vibe is positive, right? He goes into court, he comes out, these people are jeering, going crazy. He jumps in the car. He didn't notice that mm. they were there to boo him, yeah. right? In the car, he says, hey, you know, it's so surreal that people will stand here the whole day just to show me support. I said, my brother, now I'll tell you the truth on our way home. <laughs> Those people <laughs> were there to boo you. Yeah. He said, what do you mean? I said, bro, they were booing you all the time. Mm. You? you know what I mean? But but it just it was just one of those learnings where it was like, confront stuff, walk towards it. Yeah. Walk towards your dreams. Go towards what you're trying to achieve and it will gravitate towards you yeah. because that's how it works, right? Before you carry on, I wanted to say this earlier. You spoke about, this is your friend, he should put you on. I've made a video in the past explaining to people that some of us have got very rich, wealthy family members or friends or someone in your community and those people will never give you an opportunity. They'll never put you on. They'll never hire you. Some of them, it could be you're too close to proximity, family politics, whatever. The majority of them, it's because you don't have anything of value to contribute. Because if they're making a million rand a month, they've got accountants they pay, they've got lawyers they pay, bankers they pay, they've got managers, they've got employees, they've got drivers. There are all these people making money around them but none of you in the family. And you'll think it's jealousy, envy, hate. And the reality is you don't have a skill that he's willing to pay for. And my whole thing to those people was, go and, go and figure out, let's say it's an uncle who's rich, go and figure out who they pay and go and pick one of those people and, and replace them. If they have trucks, go learn how to drive trucks. They will let you drive a truck generally. Go and study accounting. He won't let you run his books and manage his books because you're not a chartered accountant. But for most of them, they would love to say, you know, my books are actually done by my niece. Do you know my business is managed by this boy who didn't come to me and say, do me a favor because like, why must I do you? This person's got five years of experience. Go and accumulate your experience and be like, uncle, I, I'm willing to work for you. These are my credentials. Um, the lesson in that for whoever was asking you that and to what you were saying about school fees is, let's say to Duzano or anyone else that you meet, Andre van der Beel wants to give you an opportunity. The question is, do you deserve to get it and are you going to be able to deliver? Because for some of us, myself, with the network that I have, the amount of DMs I get, people trying to meet, the amount of people that are going to want to meet you after this conversation, I want to meet Winston. Yo, you know, I'm from Newlands. Hey, I'm from Durban. Hey, MFA, to please hook me up with this guy. The question is, do you have something of value? We spoke about value. Do you have something of value that's going to make me confident to introduce you guys, to hook you guys up to a point where it's not going to kill my reputation? Because I don't know if you're worth introducing. It's so what if you're my cousin, my brother? I must be like, please meet this guy, Winston, because he's got a certain skill that is going to add value to your life. And where I'm also gonna be proud of him and say, well done, good luck, it's all on you now. And it's gonna make me look good so that you're like, Pen, every time you introduce me to people, bro, they literally transform my life. I've saved costs, I've made more money. My kids are now happier. I've, I've learned this thing. But people don't look to, can I become a person of value? So when I'm meeting someone, they want to. They want to work with me. I just, I just wanted to add that. Sorry, you can please carry on with your journey at you know, the time when the <laughs> speaking to that point before I go, before I go there. Sure. A young man came to my business and asking for a job. Right? Didn't have any work for you, morning. 
He said, no, no, I, I want to learn, so I'll work for free. I was like, ah, this guy will work for free. I was like, ah, my COO said, Craig, you handle this, please. Sure. You know? Forgot about it. Come to work every day, I see this guy dressed. After one month, I said to Craig, Craig, you actually, you hire this guy. He said, no, that's the crazy thing. This guy comes to work for free. And he does a hell of a lot of work. I said, seriously? He's like, yeah. Like, no. Anyway, we're not taking on right now. Man two, every day. I said, Craig, this guy. I said, Winston, he came to work every day. And we rely on him heavily. I'm like, okay, Craig, hi him. Let's see if we can back pay him for those two months. This guy is something else. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's how committed adding value. the guy was. Yeah. And adding value. So so now I'm friends with Dudazani and things have gone pear shaped. It's not popular to be his friend. Mm. You know, people are bailing left, right and centre. Now it's the blame game. It's it's because of so and so and so and so. It's because he did that. It's because of his friends. He would so because now we're all pointing fingers. Because yeah. you know, people are pointing fingers. And I'm like, Zani, even even a broken clock is right twice a day. You just gotta stay the course. You know, and then I then go after some time. I look around at at the, at the political situation and I say, "Where have we gone wrong? What's going on here? What's wrong with this picture? Why is the skill set so low? Why are we pulling from such a small skill pool? Why do we not have?" A succession plan. Why is it a lucky, lucky packet, lucky draw? Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, most organizations, you know who's going to take over, or you know the five possible next, next in line. Mm. We have no clue. It's just like a surprise. Mm. You know, and I say there's something wrong with that picture. So we need to up what it is to be a politician we need to change what a politician looks like we need to change what they do we need to change the fact that they they don't sweep they don't fix potholes mm. themselves mm. we need to change the fact that oh you can't be seen doing that we need to change the fact that you don't get to an event on time we need to change that you stay in the VIP seats and never come and engage people. We need to change that you in the VIP suites, air con eating, mm. while people, your supporters, the people who carry on their shoulders are in the sun mm. with nothing to eat, you know, standing there all day for you to go on stage and just greet them from stage and be out. Why can't you just come into the stands? Why can't you be chill there with them? Right? Why Why can't you? Why can't you go on the ground and just hang out with them? And I understand it. Sometimes it gets hectic to do so. Sometimes you can't. But when you can, mm. why can't you? Why? Why is it that if you get to the event and it's not full enough according to you, you don't pitch, mm. you turn and leave. So that hundred that were there is not good enough. You used to 5,000 people, so yeah. those hundred, they're nothing. Why can't you then change your program? Hang out with the hundred, go into the neighborhoods, see what they're about. Why, sure. can't, why can't you do that? Why can't you engage people who have different t-shirts who, who look different who from different backgrounds because the game has changed it's south africa in competition with the rest of the world it's not half of south africa or that of south africa mm -hmm. we're in competition we need to make allies we need to make friends we need to compete 
It's not us against them. It's not them against us. It's not accusing each other. It's like, let's get this done. Mm. How hard can it be? You know what I mean? People are sending rockets to the moon that return. We can't keep the lights on. Shit. Where, where, where are we? You know what I mean? Shit. You know, I always tell people, Africans be like, ah, we are fighters, this, this, this. I say, do you know, there's no black country that can defeat any European country if we had to go to war. A lot of Africans say, you're crazy. We, I say, my brother, do you make guns? No. Do you make tanks? No. Do you make attack aircraft? No. Do you make artillery? No. We like cars. Do you make cars? No. You like music. Do you make speakers? No. My brother, let's just make something. <laughs> you know what I mean? We, we, we're not there yet. These guys will speak to each other if we were fighting them, which I must be clear, we are not. It's yeah. not a black, white thing or anything sure. like that. But if it was, guys would say, hey, listen, can we just stop giving uh, those guys ammunition and guns? That's all. That's all. You don't There's even no, need to start the fight. No, you're not even in the fight. Yeah. You're not even there yet. So my brother, hang on with all of that. Mm. All that radical this and that. Be, before you carry on, I'm trying to figure out at this point when you guys are having these chats, mm. are you still at the call center? Have you started your business? No, now I'm starting my business. Now now it's the hard yards. When when the bank's coming for your car and you must hide it by your auntie, <laughs> take off the plates. That's where we are. <laughs> now it's real. <laughs> yeah. from, from that first fuel transaction, uh, sorry to ask you to summarize to where you are today Maybe just those early days. Did you just keep doing small transactions? Did you have a, a lucky break? I had a lucky break. And then it broke. <laughs> <laughs> so let me give you an example. So you have a lucky break because you make your own luck. You're right? meeting people. You're doing transactions. You're meeting, now you're starting to do transactions. So yeah. you hire staff, right? So now you're doing Loads. Moving fuel. You're moving fuel. Yeah. Loads a day, right? Mm. Then your staff <coughs> sends petrol to a diesel <laughs> order. It's uh, so there's one million worth of diesel there. Put in another one million of petrol. So two million's gone into those vehicles, those vehicles seize up, hmm. fix the vehicles, flush, replace, downtime for that business, reputational risk, you had not. Hmm. At minus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you get people that helped fund some of the transactions? Yes, you get all of that, and you. Or is it, or is it uh, one of those situations where you like, look, uh, please give me the fuel. I'll I'll pay you as soon as I. Yes, you get all to, of that. Okay, but to go to the next level, you now need funding. Yeah, you, know, you get okay. what I'm saying, and it's not like a piggy because if the business case makes sense, someone will throw money at you. Okay, if it makes sense and you're responsible, and on the face of it, there's a lot of people saying, yes. Brother, there's a lot of people that if you said, hey, listen, if you gave me 10K, I'd give you back 500 a month. Jeez. Every month, forever. <laughs> 10K, you understand? <laughs> so I'm just saying that yeah. if, if the business case makes sense, people will throw money at True. it. And it's not even high level. It's like Ordinary uncle people. who owns the Chapin says, right. yes, I've been trying to make... Make this 10K, make sure. me something. You understand? You're right. So, so you have that. But I'm saying to you, that's why it's fail forward. Yeah. Because you run, you fly, you fall down. And sometimes you fall down past mm. north to down. Mm. Then you get up again and you run again. Sure. So let me you bounce you, back. Let me give you an example. Yeah. In 2015, 14, 
was just honey was a billionaire. Then there was a day in 2014 when he was poorer than you. <laughs> Get that? Wait, I'm gonna say it again. No, know. you need to say it again, bro. So there's a time he's a billionaire. We're rolling, right? Pulling out of control. Everyone is your yeah, best friend, you boy. You hundreds. Everyone's opening the doors everywhere. You understand? And there's a time you swipe your card and it says, go into the bank. When you get into the bank, they say, ah, do you see this is complicated now because this and they give you a whole long story. What they're actually saying is, we run the show, yeah, my brother. You are not in charge. So you had not. You see? And please understand, because I've been in a situation where an account is tied. What you, I don't know how much you have in your pocket. Can we just do this, ex- how much do you have now? Now? Uh, not in my pockets, but maybe... Not in your account. Sure, you know? sure, sure. No, in my, my little man bag. Yeah. Gay bag. How much uh, is that? Maybe 140 rand. Okay. Can you be in a situation where you got to go home and tell your missus 140 rand is all you have? Because, And that's all you're going to have because they can't pay you. How are they going to pay you? Sure. So you 140, you're there. If you're going to make another plan, now you're making your cousin take your money. I know your cousin, Russia. <laughs> <laughs> and your cousin didn't know you guys make so much money. <laughs> now your wife's saying, ah, that cousin, hey. No, let's talk to my sister. You like your sister. <laughs> I take my chance. You, you see yeah. where you are, right? And this guy handles the situation cool. Can't. He says, listen, I got to do this Middle East thing. Mm-hmm. Tactical retreat and figure it out from there. Mm-hmm. So so a lot of people, when they see Tuzani, they think it, it's a soft, sting ting, Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right? So they're like, ah. But the guy's mental fortitude. His long game is serious. Mm. He's a serious guy who's done some serious things. Mm. And harbors no resentment. You don't get bitterness. And listen, I'm not even talking about taking a billion. Take your 100,000, 200,000. Mm. You bitter, bro. Sure. You know what I mean? There's no bitterness there. He's like, let's figure it out. But this can't keep happening. Like, you can't keep tying people's accounts up just because it's no good for the system. Yeah. You know? Because even if you're saying, no, no, we want a reputable justice system, you tie my accounts up, how do I even get a lawyer to defend myself? Yeah. The quality of lawyer I get now is a freebie. So is that really? Yeah really a fair system it's not so 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 the powers that be need to look at what they subject our people to Mm. you know because it is incumbent on those in power and that have authority to protect the weak and protect the poor because it will at some point get to a situation where they need protection from the poor and the weak because those numbers are way too high. So if you're not protecting the poor from the indignity of poverty because there's a certain humiliation that comes with poverty. If you've never taken a magazine article and, and made that paper soft. See, see, you know what I'm saying, I'm right? Exactly what you're saying. Make that paper soft. There's a funny yeah. little joke here. So there was I think I read somewhere where 
people are asking why why people ask so black people really love reading magazines and <laughs> why are they always going with magazines into the toilet you, you see yeah yeah why I, do you guys always go with the magazines to the to, do you just love reading sure sure hmm? I, lo- i love reading hmm? and and the accidents that happen <laughs> You understand? Because <laughs> that type is not made to... Stop it. <laughs> you Stop get it. what I'm saying? <laughs> But that's... Oh, this normal. is why we like the yellow pages. Because yeah, there's some softer... It's normal to you and me. You, paper. Every black person knows what that is. Yeah. Why do they know what it is? Why do they know? Why do you... I haven't told you what I'm talking about yet. Why do you know? Yeah. He's a camera guy, you sound guy. Why does he know? What you I just about? went like this, guys. Yeah. But, <laughs> but you know. Yeah. I said accidents, you were like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> please protect our dignity. Yeah. That's what you said, yeah. right? Why? Because poverty, there's an indignity that comes with it, right? There's an indignity when you look down that pit. Or that bucket. You know what I mean? You know what that means. Mm. You know how it looks. Yeah. Why? That's not normal. That's not normal. So we need to protect people that if it gets low, it doesn't get that low. Sure. You know? And there's enough for us to do that. Because remember, after a while, like I said to, just just to digress a bit, I said, you know, when you're in the hood and someone of means comes into the hood, even if he's a capable person, you just feel like he's soft. You feel like, yeah. I could take my chances with ah, this of guy. Of course. He smells like, you know? Sure. Like... <laughs> <laughs> this guy, I, I could take him. Sure. You know what I mean? Smelling like Dior. <laughs> <laughs> that oil of a lion. Those, those hands look soft, boy. You know what I mean? Tender. Fast forward. You go into the hood. Mm. You smell like that guy. Yeah. You know that guy that yeah. you... So what does it say? It says, brother... There's a certain kind of degrading that poverty does, even to your mental state. And we should protect each other from that. And also, when our leadership try to spread a message that says, No, no, you don't have to really work for it. Vote me in, I'll give it to you. You're entitled to them. We should say, no, no, maybe we're not going to vote for that kind of leader. Mm. We're going to vote for an honest leader who tells our people what it takes to change these things around. Yeah. Because a, a lot of, even the crime we're experiencing is a bitterness of families and people who were promised things. Mm. When you're free, it's about lit. Mm. It hasn't been lit. Yeah. You know? So I've said, even when when I've been called on to say one or two things at, at Duzani's engagements, I've said, don't think the day after we vote Duzani in, your life's going to change. Sure. No. What changes is the opportunity you get to change your life. Mm. That it's on the court. But the guy who's thinking, now I'm going to pull some tenders and pull some moves, that's, that's not where it's at. And we need to be honest now and say, if that's your thinking... Don't vote for him because... You're not going to get that. Yeah. He, he, we don't want to disappoint you. I, 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 sa- I said to the Somalian guy last year, relatively young, came came into South Africa, I think when he was 14, 
went to study at one of the universities here, became part of the SRC. Today he works with other Somalians. They run businesses. There's a group of them. I don't know if it's 20 of them. They all put in 50K a month in their savings to buy stock and those kind of things. And one of the things he said, and look, it could just be a perspective, because I was asking him, how do you feel about the fact that America is currently bombing Somalia and no one's speaking about it? He gave me his thoughts about that, but then he also said, you know, one of the reasons America is bombing us and one of the reasons Somalians in South Africa do so well in retail is because we don't like handouts. In Somalia, some of the people there, when America comes to bring aid, say, we don't want your aid. We're willing to trade with you. Let us trade with each other, but don't give us aid. We're fine on our own. And he spoke in contrast to South African people who, because mentally they've been given this entitlement, destructive freebies. He's like, that's why it's not even a competition for us with black South Africans. Because their minds are not about, we don't want free things. It, I don't know if the word he used was dignity, but he definitely meant dignity. He's like, there's something undignified as a, specifically you are speaking as a man, for another man to come and feed you and your family. No, I don't need you to, to feed. My woman, my kids have to go in queue to be fed by you. No, I'll feed them. All I'm asking for is an opportunity to be able to feed my family. I don't need you to feed them because what does that make me as a man? What does it make my woman with the child seeing that, mom, this is not even your money. The money we're going to fetch is not your money. So don't tell me. It's my money. The government said. Now, even as a woman, you don't have the dignity of saying, I work hard to feed my child. So your own child doesn't see you. The child growing up in that space of, but I've always been fed by. You're like, no, go work. Why? Why must I work when I know I can get a free thing here? It absolutely decimates the, the mindset of someone. And to what you were saying earlier, like there's a huge privilege and struggle. And until we understand the beauty of hard work, the beauty of building something yourself, the beauty of you bringing home a buck that you've caught with the dogs that you've bred, like my father used to breed greyhounds and you caught it and it was a skill and you bring that buck back and your woman goes and she picks vegetables from the garden you guys have with your children that they work in every day and she goes into the house and she prepares that meal with buck meat and your vegetables and when you eat it it's not just a meal it's something more than that it's a it's a human experience of we know what it took for this and when someone comes into our house wanting to come and destroy our vegetable garden wanting to come and kill my dogs wanting to come and keep me from hunting he is threatening my survival and from there it gives us the sense of we must also be able to protect what we have and that makes you a dignified human being in this world and it's it's been destroyed so for the work that you're doing i i, I wish at some point people can understand the how deep that that thing goes it's not just getting a job it's not just no we want you to it's there's a there's an entire solistic if there is such a word experience in being able to feed yourself you know i think to close it off <laughs> in the interest of time two last questions from me the first one being What is your role going to be as working with Duduzane in trying to leave this country? What is your role going to be? What is your role now? And then number two, I'd like you to give us a glimpse into the business you've built and, and what work it does and how potentially people can get involved in the business that you're running now. Okay. When it comes to Duduzane, and the campaign. Hashtag change cartel. Yeah. Let them know. Yeah. <laughs> My role will always be to support, to roll my sleeves up and, and get busy with him, but also to give him an honest and sobering account 
of how he's being received. That's important. Of the impact he's making or not making. That's important. And when it's time to leave the dance floor, mm. because a lot of us don't know that that Michael Jackson beat it song is no more the song. Yeah. You know? You know? You're still saying, ah, this song sold more than. <laughs> no, my guy. Yeah. It's okay. It, it is a big song, but it's time to leave the yeah. dance floor. And true leadership knows when to put your hand up and put your, you know, step forward. But likewise, knows when to say, actually, guys, take it from you. You're stronger, you're smarter, you're more prepared. Let me sail off into the sunset if you need advice, if you need any support, we are. Mm. But you take it from here. We trust you. We believe in you. And by the way, there are many South Africans from all walks of life who have the skill, who have the capacity, who just need a wink, wink, nudge, nudge, mm. say, Brother, sister, we can do this. You don't need to leave the country. You don't need to run away to Canada. You don't. There are doctors. There are there are lawyers. There are builders. There are construction people. There are engineers. Thinking, where to from here? Are we safe? Some uh, political rhetoric zeroes in on on different groups. Are we still seen as South African? Because. Remember, we're playing these games. We're saying, this group of people in this area, beware. That group of people in that area, beware. But we were there in, in, in KZN when the root, looting and rioting happened. It was the scariest thing I've ever experienced. Because it wasn't, oh, you one of us. It just became pandemonium. It was the saddest thing to see. South African fighting against South African. Brother fighting against brother. Sister fighting against sister. So we don't want to see that. We want people to be proud of their country. We want people to be proud of the work they put in. We want to be able to say, we are part of doing that. And when they speak of the country, when they speak of the continent, we started that revolution. We started that mindset. And and revolution doesn't necessarily need to be a violent thing. It just needs to be a change in mindset. Yeah. So so I'd always like to be that voice to 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 Duzani and the rest of the team. I'd always like to be hands on. And and remember being involved. And making a change doesn't mean singing political songs necessarily or could just mean empowering young people. Mm. It could just mean growing your business yes. and sharing a part of a part of the wealth. It could just mean giving people opportunity and increasing capacity, right? In terms of my business, I'd like to the, the the currently a a a system I'm I'm formalizing where you can open a business within my business where it's like a franchise where I give it I give you the fuel the diesel the petrol the gas the oil at such a great par- price mm. you know that you can make margin on it. You know, and it doesn't necessarily kill the market, but what it what happens is it it, it trickles downward. So it so it facilitates ordinary people yeah, who couldn't get in otherwise. Hundred yeah. percent. But over and above that, it widens the net yes. of people being involved in the economy because yeah. there's too many people that are just 
playing down, not even at the table. Yeah. So we got to think out of the box and, and how do we do that? So that's what I, I'm excited about. About The name of your company is? Limitless World. Limitless World. Yeah. Your website gives crazy amounts that you guys are turning over. Yeah, but remember, fuel is high turnover, low margins, sure. right? So yeah, the, 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 at the bank, they know you, right? But if 200 you, to 300 million rand a year. Yeah, but if you... You if, must say it's with your chest. No, no, that's for sure, but... Jeez. And be, you're looking to share... In the you're looking to sh- club. That's where I'm trying to be, you know? Yeah. You're looking to share that with the people and people that... I'm thinking the people that you're looking for are people that have some exposure to the industry, that have exposure to maybe logistics and those kind of things to be like, look, set up your own, is it called a depot? Yeah. Set up your own depot. I don't know if you guys are go- at some point are going to help people set up depots. And I don't even we'll think you. you need exposure. You need okay. commitment. You need commitment because... Like a person like myself who's never been in the industry wanting to get involved. Yeah, huh? but if if you're committed, yeah. you'll start to have the conversations. And this is not rocket science. There's a product... That you're gonna, yeah, you're going to get from me at price A. Yeah. And you're going to sell it to price, to to the customer. Yeah. Right? The customer can't jump over you because we're going to have a, 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 a group of preferred suppliers. Sure. And I am a wholesaler, so yeah. I technically have to sell to a wholesaler. Yeah. So I can't sell to the end user. Sure. You know, so the, other, the other thing that you mentioned was was people. Part of what well, part of what's going to be special is to the people jumping in. You have your people. Yeah, they're, they're not my people. They're, they're not yours, my people. So they'll come through you. And it doesn't even make sense for me to try and make them my people. Yeah, I want to deal with the small niche. You guys. So yeah, that makes sense. Winston, thank you so much, bro. Brother, I, I think a month okay. or two ago, um, I sat with you and Tutuzani in Durban. Um, the hospita- hospitability. hospitality, hospitality, sing yes, this is hey. jumping, Baba. <laughs> the hospitality was pretty dope. Um, you exposed me to spaces I've never been in. Um, maybe in closing, I'd, I'd like you for the benefit of whoever's going to be consuming this. Number one, I want to thank you guys because you you said you're going to come to Joburg and sit with me, and you guys kept your word. Thank you so much. Number two, I, I told you about suffering from imposter syndrome and the fact that I'm in certain spaces and I feel like I shouldn't be here. People are rich. Yo, I'm just a little guy from Inukasela who makes online content. And there were some words you shared with me and some advice you gave to me then. And you don't necessarily have to go back to that moment and say it how you said it, but I'd, I'd like, as if I was asking you back then, Winston, I'm, I'm suffering from imposter syndrome. I feel like I shouldn't be here. You guys turn over hundreds of millions. You're telling me Tutuzani was a billionaire. It's probably going to bounce back soon. How, how do I overcome my imposter syndrome in the world? Firstly, understand that there's a value you add. There's something you bring to the equation. The fact that you have a skill set, the fact that you're an autodidactic in a sense where you are able to catch on to new concepts, break into new markets, have thought-provoking ideas, thought-provoking conversations, the fact that you make someone feel some type of way when they engage you, the fact that I have a wow moment because when I met you, just on engaging I was like, this guy is a breath of fresh air. And I'm not saying that to, to stroke your ego. I'm saying it to say that this is the kind of engagements that change the world. So in your niche, you're the goat. In your corner, you're that guy. So you don't have to have imposter syndrome because, yeah, maybe in my space, I'm the guy. Mm-hmm. But you got your space, brother. Let them know. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got your space. Because I I couldn't do this, at, honestly, at the level that you do it. Mm. Right? And there's many interviews where I watched and I'm just like, wow, 
how does this guy just make this flow? How does he make this engagement so honest and and thought provoking and tangible and understandable? Because I mean, he does it effortlessly. So understand that don't put down your value because when you get imposter syndrome, you think, ah, what I do or say or bring to the table is insignificant. Yeah. And my brother, it's not true because no one worth their salt wants to waste their time. The fact that I've sat here more than half my day, the fact that the Rizani's sat here means there's that thing you bring to the party. So understand that. So even when people are trying to miss you around, when they're not on time, shut it down, <laughs> B. You know what I mean? Because he mustn't think he or she is that and you just, no, no. You are the opportunity. You are that thing. And I'm not saying it to make you arrogant. I'm saying it to for you to appreciate and understand your wealth, that you can walk in to any room, however you want to dress, and impact that room, being yourself. So to guys like you, we appreciate you. To people in the background, the cameraman, the light yeah. people, yeah. thank you for, for holding this guy on your, your shoulders because... He's nothing without you. Facts. To the missus who has to reassure you and is there in the nighttime when you when you <laughs> when you when you're freaking out like I don't know if this is gonna work. Because yeah. that's the time real men are like, oh, I don't know, babe. Yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna get through this. I don't know we got bills. I don't know if it, this is a bridge too far. So for for her being the person who says, I got you, mm. you know what I mean? Uh, for being your peace, we appreciate her because it takes all of that to make this work. Mm. So thank you very much, my brother. Winston, um, looking forward to hearing that you've grown to over a belly in your turnover. I'm looking forward to all the people that are hopefully going to listen to this conversation and reach out and help scale the business all the people whose lives you're still going to transform, the amazing stories and wisdom that you share from the first time I met you. Um, and to yourself, and to Tuzane, for this mountain that you guys are climbing, I'm really hoping so many more of us, even if we don't necessarily join you directly, but are inspired by the work you're doing and we take the light from you guys and we light it somewhere else. It's going to be an exciting story to tell and I'm, I'm looking forward to being a part of it, maybe telling parts of it as well, and to growing my relationship with you as well. Thanks for coming through. Thank you, my brother. Easy. <laughs>